नमस्ते एवरीवन इन कंटिन्यूएशन टू आवर सीरीज ऑन मैरिज इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक ऑफ समथिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट इज मोर देन वन मैरिज एक्स्ट्रा मैरिटल अफेयर एंड डिवोर्स हाउ टू चेक दैट थ्रू हॉरोस्कोप सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कमिंग टू मोर देन वन मैरिज as you may have learned through my previous video that when the seventh lord is exalted debilitated retrograde or in its own sign it goes into multiplication and because this multiplication is happening with the seventh lord which indicates marriage this is a combination for more than one marriage in which retrogression indicates person being deserted by their spouse or losing their spouse to accidents disease etc and being forced to marry again for the sake of children or whatever whereas exaltation retrogression or seventh lord being in own sign does indicate that person himself leaving the spouse in this particular scenario if the seventh house is afflicted by malefics natural malefics or the seventh lord is afflicted by influence of natural malefics in that particular scenario person will desert the spouse because of the bad nature behavior character of the spouse and will get married again in that particular scenario where the seventh house and seventh lord is not getting influenced by any planet or getting influenced by benefic planets while the seventh lord is exalted retrograde or in own sign then the person because of generating affection to someone else because of liking someone else etc will desert their spouse will leave their spouse and will go on to marry again that's the first point other than that what i have practically seen that seventh lord in the ninth house ninth lord in the seventh house is also a very potent combination for more than one marriage and in this particular scenario person gets married again but here there is one case here you should understand the definition of more than one marriage if the person have had more than one year long relationship which indicate which includes mental physical emotional social and financial involvement upon each other then it is akin to a marriage in the eyes of astrology and if someone have already gone through one such a relationship then that relationship should be counted as first marriage and the formal marriage with someone else with some other partner should be counted as second marriage so in these cases where this have happened before marriage generally the second marriage combination does not fructify because the marriage itself is the second marriage so for that you will have to ask from the person whose horoscope you are looking at so i was saying that seventh lord in ninth house or ninth lord in seventh house generally indicates more than one marriage specifically when this is benefic planet when the seventh lord is benefic going into ninth house or ninth lord is benefic coming into the seventh house then it indicates though malefic also do but benefics indicated benefics <clears throat> show this result more strongly even more prominently not only this the seventh lord in 6 8 and 12 houses while the lagna lord is also afflicted in 6 8 and 12 house both seventh lord in 6 8 and 12 house and lagna lord also in 6 8 and 12 house also indicates more than one marriage right these are few combinations which indicate more than one marriage though there are many other combinations also venus and seventh lord being in dual sign while being in dual navamsha also etc etc but these combinations in my experience does not come out to be true does not work in experience so these are the two combinations that i have told you and my major formula for predicting more than one marriage is the retrogression debilitation exaltation own rashi position of the seventh lord in this scenario generally what i have seen you say <clears throat> seventh lord is exalted and retrograde so by exaltation it is multiplied by 3 by being retrograde it again becomes multiplied by 3 this about this multiplication i have talked in the previous video the special conditions of seventh lord i think is the title of the video so if the seventh lord is exalted also retrograde also it is multiplied by 3 because of exaltation and multiplied by 3 because of retrogression it is a total of multiplied by 6 so six relationships are indicated here so this have to be carefully judged and 
Sometimes people have questioned that if a planet is in own rush in retrograde, which result will come to pass? Both results will come to pass. Right? If there are more than one combinations happening in a horoscope, negation of result generally does not happen until and unless the planet is very weak. If the planet is combust or is scoring less than 100% point in Shedable, then this planet is very weak. The result indicated by this planet may not manifest. Only in that scenario, the combinations get cancelled. Otherwise, whatever is the combination, the result of that combination comes for sure. That is without any doubt. I have told this to you so that you understand that if the seventh lord is combust or if the seventh lord is having less than 100% point or you say less than 60 rupees in total Shedable, in that scenario, seventh lord is weak enough to give their result. And in such cases, even if the seventh lord is indicating multiple marriages because of the multiplicity factor, it may not come to pass because seventh lord is unable, unable to give the result. This needs to be understood. Now, additionally, extramarital affair combination. So, extramarital affair combination that I am talking about. First, there is a basic combination that you have to understand. Venus connected to Mars is the basic combination that indicates extramarital affair. Now, basically, what happens in astrology? When you talk of divisional charts, you don't say Aries Navamsha or Scorpio Navamsha. You generally say Navamsha of Mars, which includes both Aries and Scorpio. Basic point is dual connection between Mars and Venus. You say if Mars is conjoined with Venus, Mars is respecting Venus, Venus, this is a singular connection. This does not count. Dual connection means what? Venus in the sign of Mars suspected by Mars, two connection. Venus in the sign of Mars conjoined by Mars, two connection. So dual connection between Venus and Mars. Mars in the sign of Venus while aspecting Venus. Mars in the sign of Venus while conjoined with Venus. Is a dual connection between Mars and Venus. This will indicate extra metal. Now come to Navamsha chart. D1 ascendant being Aries or Scorpio, Navamsha ascendant being Libra or Taurus. Or D1 ascendant being Libra or Taurus, Navamsa ascendant being Scorpio or Aries will indicate extramarital affair. Venus in the Navamsha of Mars, Aries or Scorpio, while being aspected or conjoined by Mars, this aspect or conjunction can happen in Rashi chart or Navamsha chart, will indicate more than one marriage. Mars in the Navamsha of Venus, while aspecting or conjoining Venus, this aspect or conjunction can happen in D1 chart or D9 chart anywhere will also indicate extra marital affair. Not only this, an exchange between Mars and Venus, either in the Rashi chart or specifically in the Navamsha chart will also indicate extra marital affair. Moon and Venus conjoined in Scorpio, Aries, Taurus or Libra. In Navamsha chart, or moon and mercury conjoined in Scorpio Rashi in Navamsha chart. Generally indicates extra marital affair. I should not say extra marital affair. I should say loose characters and morals. It indicates so that the person can go to any extent in these areas. Extra marital etc. Now when you talk of marriage, ethics and morals, D30 also known as Trimshamsha becomes very important. So secrets of Trimshamsha you will have to understand. Now the combination that you have understood up to this extent, the Rashi Navamsha combination between Venus and Mars, just replace the Navamsha to Trimshamsha D30 in this case. So Venus in own Rashi going into the D30 of Mars, Aries Scorpio, or Venus in the Rashi of Mars and going into in going into his own Trimshamsha. Libra or Taurus in D30 will indicate extra metal affair. Not only this Venus in Trimshamsha of Venus in D30 of Mars while being aspected or conjoined by Mars, this aspect or conjunction can happen in D1 or D30 will indicate more than one marriage, more than one, one relationship alongside marriage, extra metal affair. Mars in the D30 of Venus 
while being aspected while aspecting venus or being conjoined by venus this aspect or conjunction either happening in d30 chart or d1 chart will also indicate having extra metal affair not only this in this combination moon is also included so moon in the rashi of mars and d30 of venus or moon being in the rashi of venus and d30 of mars will also indicate extra marital affair right these are few of the combinations that indicate extra marital affair for sure but extra marital affair is something critical which should be seen by those who have quite some experience in analyzing horoscopes and as i have told you earlier while predicting this the combinations of when a planet becomes ineffective when a result gets gets cancelled etc you have to be aware about it and only if you have good knowledge of astrology a to z thorough knowledge of astrology structured knowledge of astrology only then predict it otherwise take the help of your friend or take a professional help before labeling someone as a cheater or having extra metal affair because throwing malice at someone's character is very easy right hence it should not be done until and unless you are well qualified to do so so because i have told of you know because i have told of uh, cancellation of the combination so i will also discuss about which are the combinations which cancel extra marital affair combination so first of all let's understand lagna or ascendant is the house of personality only people with weak personality go into extra marital affairs people having weak personality fears phobias and such bad things self doubt etc only they go into affairs the reality right those who try to find happiness outside in others will go into affairs so an affliction free ascendant affliction free ascendant means ascendant not as influenced by malefics natural malefics sun mars saturn rahu or 6 8 12 house lord an affliction free ascendant with a powerful ascendant lord exalted own rashi mool trikon etc ascendant lord will indicate that person is self satisfied self contented and generally will not go into extra marital affairs at all right in this scenario if the lagna lord is a malefic planet and influencing the ascendant it should not be treated as ascendant house lord is never bad for the house another is 10th house 10th house is the house of karma when the 10th lord is powerful when the 10th house is affliction free in this particular scenario person is always aware of karma and they make sure that they always commit good karma only and they don't do bad karma even by mistake so in that scenario when the 10th house is 10th house lord is powerful exalted or rashi mulat trikon etc powerful conditions and the 10th house is affliction free that means 10th house is not having influence of any natural malefic saturn mars rahu etc and 10th house not having any influence of 6 8 10 12 house lord this is a blemish free 10th house and people with blemish free 10th house will only commit good karmas they will be aware of their karmas they will be very much afraid of doing bad karmas committing sins hence they will not go into extra marital affairs in this particular scenario remember that if the lagna lord is malefic planet but if he is influencing the 10th house then the connection of lagna and 10th house should not be considered a malefic connection despite the fact that lagna lord can be a malefic planet now additionally 9th house is the house of dharma right dharma following the path of dharma so if the ninth lord is powerful and once again ninth house is affliction free not afflicted by malefics natural malefics not afflicted by 6 8 and 12 house lord while the ninth lord is powerful in that particular scenario also the person will follow dharma will not do extra marital affairs the same condition as i have told you earlier also fourth house is the house of ethics and morals so when the fourth house lord is quite powerful and fourth house is not afflicted then in that particular scenario also the person will not lose his morals he will be dedicated devoted etc now to have lagna lord 10th lord 9th lord and 4th lord all of them powerful is not possible so out of these four houses only lord of one house being powerful own rashi mool trikon vargottam retrograde is powerful condition 
out of these four houses, only one house lord being powerful and three houses being free of affliction is enough. And in that case, no matter how many combinations for extramarital affair are there, person will not go into extramarital affair. In this scenario, remember that if the 6th, 8th and 12th house lords are weak, debilitated, combust, etc. And they are influencing these four houses, then because of weakness, they are not able to influence these four houses negatively. Alternatively, a natural malefic planet such as Sun, Mars, Saturn, Rahu, when they are Vargottam, On Rashi, Mulutrikon, not retrogression. Vargottam, On Rashi, Mulutrikon, in this scenario, they lose their malefic nature. And when in connection to these four houses, Lagana, 10th house, 9th house, and 4th house, they don't afflict it. So keeping this cancellation combination in mind, one should carefully look for the extra metal combinations. And if the extra metal combinations are found, extra metal affair can be told, should be told. Right? And this extra metal affair comes to pass in the Dasha and Tardasha of the planet who are creating the extra metal affair. In the Dasha and Tardasha of planet who are influencing the planets, creating extra metal affair combination. And the Rashi Lord of the planets who are dispositing the planets who are creating extra metal affair combination. So timing the affair is a difficult task. It will be difficult for you. But I have told you in nutshell how to do it. So generally to simplify it, if the Mars Venus combination, which is the major combination for extra metal affair, if Mars Venus combination is indicating extra metal affair, then the affair will start in <clears throat> Mars Dashantar Dasha, Venus Dashantar Dasha. Or in the Dashantar Dasha of those planets who are the Lord of the Rashi, where the Mars and Venus are situated in. Now you will think, sir, Mars or Venus will be situated in each other's Rashi only. That is not the point. What I told you, Venus can be in the Rashi of Mars conjoined by Mars in Navamsha. In this combination also extra metal will be indicated. But the same Venus in the Rashi chart can be in the Rashi of Mercury. So here the Rashi Lord of Venus is Mercury and the affair will start in the Shantar Dasha of Mercury also. So all the principles that I have told you, you have to carefully note them down and carefully see them. I have chosen every word very carefully while explaining it. So a careful note should be made the prime point I'm telling you. Now coming to the combination of divorce or break of marriage. So let me be very honest with you. I have a singular combination for all these things. No? Generally, when I practice astrology, I highly propagate having a definitive combination. One definitive combination that if this combination is present, this will happen for sure. Sort of. Is one definitive combination. So for more than one marriage for extra marital, this one definitive combination is retrogression, exaltation, debilitation, or own Rashi position of seventh house lord. Now, how to differentiate between extra marital affair and more than one marriage? So this I have told you in the previous video also. That if the seventh lord is getting an multiplication factor, retrogression, exaltation, own sign, debilitation. Seventh Lord is going into these conditions that indicate multiplication factor and the divorce is indicated. Then it will be more than one marriage. If the divorce is not indicated, then it will be having concubines. That means we'll be having extramarital affair. So this is my prime combination. Now, what is the combination for divorce? The house for divorce is eighth house. In the case of female horoscope. Second house in the case of male horoscope. What you have to do, you have to take 8th house lord and 2nd house lord. What I am telling you, house lord. This is ma maximum confusion. Sir, Saturn is situated in 8th house. Saturn is in this Navamsha. Are you not Saturn? 8th lord. Lord. Lord of the Rashi. So for female horoscope, lord of the 8th house. For male horoscope, lord of the 2nd house. You should check in Navamsha. If the 8th Lord for the female horoscope or 2nd Lord for the male horoscope is situated in Malefic Navamsha. That means Aries Rashi in Navamsha, Leo Rashi in Navamsha, Scorpio Rashi in Navamsha, Capricorn or Aquarius Rashi in Navamsha, Malefic Rashi. If they are situated in Malefic Rashi in Navamsha or 
they are conjoined with remember conjoined with not expected by they are conjoined with malefic planets sun saturn mars rahu in navamsha chart who eighth lord for the female horoscope and second lord for the male horoscope where you have to see it in the navamsha chart then it is a definite divorce combination divorce will happen for sure no one can stop this divorce no one ever first point additionally when the seventh house lord is afflicted another combination i will tell you that works quite brilliantly seventh house lord should be afflicted so first what i am telling you affliction of seventh house lord affliction will happen when the seventh house lord is connected with 6 8 and 12 house lord or seventh house lord is connected with malefics mars rahu saturn sun so seventh lord should be afflicted and saturn connected to the seventh house saturn is the karaka for misery or rahu connected to the seventh house who is the karaka for cheating seventh lord afflicted rahu or saturn connected to the seventh house will indicate divorce for sure right so the spouse deserting you after giving you misery or spouse deserting you because they have cheated you in marriage or because their prime intention was to cheat you only in this once again also remember if the natural malefic goes into their own sign or if they are vargottam then they lose their malefic nature so rahu in the 7th house rahu aspecting 7th house in this combination where the 7th lord is also afflicted if this rahu is vargottam or saturn influencing the 7th house in this combination where the 7th lord is also afflicted but saturn of saturn of aquarius saturn of capricorn saturn which is vargottam influencing the 7th house will not cause the divorce right so a critical judgment should be done and these are the combinations which tells me that divorce is for sure there is no there is no you know there, there is no two thought about it so this have to be critically seen though i can tell you 50 60 combinations for it but i have told you only those combinations which work what you will do by remembering 50 60 combinations only two works in real life practice others don't there is also one more point i should tell you see you have an ascendant there is a lord of ascendant if your spouse is born in a rashi where your lord of ascendant gets debilitated then this marriage will break for sure is no two thought about it so you are born in aquarius ascendant you say or capricorn ascendant your lagna lord is saturn it will get debilitated in aries if you get married to a partner born in aries ascendant then in that particular scenario no one can save this marriage it will break for sure if there is a divorce combination it will be a divorce if there is no divorce combination it will be a separation if the seventh house is very good in that scenario slowly slowly the relationship will die and the husband and wife will be only living a life of compromise only as friends being eternally angry to each other into a cold war right so this is the setup where no remedy nothing can save you if the lagna lord of your horoscope is getting debilitated in the ascendant of the partner so while doing a match making this should be kept into consideration if you want to make sure that misery do not be fall on the couple also you see you can do the same with the moon sign lord also so say your moon is situated into gemini gemini so moon sign lord becomes mercury now this mercury gets debilitated into pisces if you get married to someone who have their moon in pisces so basically partner having moon in that rashi where your moon sign lord gets debilitated then no one can save your marriage is my guarantee there will be divorce there will be separation or that relationship will die anything of this will happen but this will not be saved at all so these things should be kept in mind while doing matchmaking 
to save yourself from the disasters of marriage. To choose a right partner with whom you can live happily. Thank you for watching the video. We'll meet in the next video.